so this is my first post for the week um, because over the last seven and eight days so much stuff has happened um, that there's been a lot of reflection and a lot of emotions and feelings and I've been trying to work out the best way to sit with it, experience it and place it out there. One of the things that I found has been really helpful this week has been painting and finding creativity and writing and expressing exactly how I feel. Um, in the wake of the latest shooting in um, Atlanta, Georgia, I found myself kind of reflecting a little bit more on what it really means to exist as a person in a society and culture here in America or when I'm in Europe or Africa or Asia and how tiring and taxing it can be sometimes to always be on alert, concern that you might get hurt, worried that someone might spew hate um, at you. Um, so I wanted to find a way to voice um, that in just the sadness I feel when others have to experience this as well. It's a short poem, I think, um, but it's just one of the ways I find when it doesn't make sense to just express. My eyes have held back tears because I am not sure I have earned the right on your behalf. My heart holds the sadness of what it feels like to never be seen. My soul is full of sorrow that you should ever feel this pain. Today my body is tired from always keeping my chin up, ignoring the hate of those with empty hearts and the ability to hate with such ease. My eyes hold back tears that we do not see how precious a life is, that some deem themselves gods and lord of life. Underneath this skin, deep within, there is anger. Anger that we cannot breathe freely. Underneath this skin, there is rage that in our awareness, we still walk blind because it is safe this world was made for you and it was made for me and yet we are made to feel like guests visitors who are poised controlled in our behavior never overstepping our boundaries and left feeling as though we should know our place we may not be lucky to see the change we wish. We may not see a new world where compassion reigns free, where we breathe freely and loudly as we please in return to see each other deeply, softly and lovingly. My eyes hold back tears because if I should let them go, this dam will break and with it it will carry cries of sorrow for the many who have died before us it will wash the glue that has kept all our broken hearts mended held together each time it has fallen and shattered it will destroy me and you in the process. My eyes and my heart wonders if I can cry with you, by you, without fixing. Through therapy, I have learned now 
the importance of honoring anger when I feel it, honoring the rage when I feel it. What I found over the years is that my ability to have so much patience with things and behaviors that have brought me anger and rage, it has prevented me from expressing my needs. It also prevented me from drawing boundaries and stating things that were acceptable and not acceptable to me. I was never really comfortable with particular ways in which I express anger, not because I felt that it was wrong, but because the way that I grew up in the culture and family I grew up in, expressing any form of anger in physical form was never met with validation and understanding. So what this meant is that I, over the years, did not find ways and outlets in which I could express my emotions. Yes, through my writing as an artistic person, it was easy to express my ideals and my idea of love and joy and happiness and sadness. But when it came to anger, I honestly didn't know what to do. As time has gone on, I've now realized how important it is. As I've learned to release some of this anger and rage that has been bottled up, how freeing it is and how much it opens more room for me to express myself creatively, how to I'm able to express myself more openly because I'm no longer holding on to that anger that I've suppressed and held down. We need to express anger. Without bringing harm to others, we need to express it. How we individually choose to express it is up to us. It should not be dictated. It should not be policed. I welcome the individual who has to sit and scream in their pillow or their car, who has to raise their voice to be heard. I also welcome the individual who chooses to express through art or writing or creative outlet. But whichever avenue you take, make sure that you are expressing it without harm to others. It is a release. It is healthy. It is good and it makes room. For me, I've now discovered that whilst I'm not one that comfortably might raise my voice or f confront an individual face to face, I'm finding that one way that allows me to say what I need to say is through poetry and it is through painting. In other times, I find it easier to express through dancing and music. It is important to find what it is you need for an outlet to express what you feel. This is my anger.